Hello everyone, my name is Philip Wojcowski, and today I will be discussing my ongoing work on the effects of encapsulant properties on the thermomechanical reliability of double side cooled PAR modules for traction diverters. My talk will consist of three main parts, starting with an overview of the background and motivation for the work itself, and then moving on to the main content of this work regarding the finite element analysis simulations, which were utilized to evaluate the theoretical thermomechanical reliability behavior of double side cooled PAR modules. I will then finish off with some conclusions and recommendations regarding which encapsulants can potentially affect and improve the reliability and lifetimes of these types of packages as well. In the field of power electronics, single side cooled power modules have traditionally been one of the most commercially utilized packaging configurations for powered semiconductor devices. They are mainly characterized by a power device directly bonded onto a metal substrate and interconnected using wire bonds. One of the main constraints of this packaging structure, however, is the fact that the heat generated by the device can only be dissipated from one side of the module, limiting the thermal and power processing performance of the device itself. As the demand for new and higher performing power electronic systems, especially in the electric vehicle market, is growing, new power module configurations have become of great interest to researchers and industry members alike, a key one being the double side cooled power module configuration. Double side cooled DSC or so called sandwich type power modules are packages that power semiconductor devices that are primarily designed to reduce junction to case thermal resistance. DSC modules, like the ones we have built here at CPES, are typically characterized by two parallel substrates on the top and the bottom, with a chip bonded on top of one of the substrates and a metal interposer connecting the device to the other substrate, completing the overall structure. They are characterized by low junction in case thermal resistance, low profile, and low package strain inductances that translate to modules with higher efficiency, higher power density, and lower switching losses than the traditional single site cooled or wire bonded modules. Therefore, can potentially realize lower costs for manufacturing these types of modules, as well as provide more reliable power processing components for a variety of different applications. However, one of the main drawbacks of DSC uh, modules is that they are structurally more rigid than single side cooled modules, raising concerns about their thermomechanical reliability, especially around the interconnection points uh, where cracks can form and propagate, limiting the overall performance and lifetime of these power modules as a whole. To help alleviate this issue, as well as to expedite the penetration of DSC power modules in the electric vehicle market, Packaging innovations are needed to improve the thermomechanical reliability of the interconnection joints inside these modules. Currently, the state-of-the-art solutions in the research field, as well as in industry, typically focus on engineering the geometry or the material of the interconnect joints in the module. This includes things like designing package components, like the spring-loaded spacers that you see here, typically found in IGBT press pack power modules, which help alleviate the pressure and thermal stresses that the die and the bonds will experience during operation. Another example is including strain buffer materials like molybdenum, which have a very low thermal, uh, very low coefficient of thermal expansion. It can help decrease the thermal mechanical stresses and the CT mismatch typically found at the interconnection joints and areas inside the module. However, these solutions, as you might imagine, can complicate the package assembly process, which in turn can increase the cost of manufacturing set components and modules well as they can reduce the module's thermal performance with the use of lower thermal conductivity materials like the molybdenum mentioned here. Because of this, we decided to take a more materials-based approach to the problem and took inspiration from past work done by researchers in the field of integrated circuit IC packaging who have utilized rigid epoxy materials to improve the thermal mechanical reliability of solder joints. In this study, we expanded on that previous research and investigated the effects of these rigid epoxy-based encapsulants on the thermal mechanical fatigue of the bonded interfaces inside a typical DSC structure during standard temperature cycling condition. The main goal was to quantify and analyze the effects of encapsulants, you know, the encapsulants elastic modules and coefficient of thermal expansion on the final accumulated plastic strain per cycle or irreversible damage of the bonds inside the DSC power module. By simulating via finite element analysis simulations, the influence of the encapsulant properties on this plastic strain at the bonded interfaces subjected to temperature cycling, suitable encapsulants were identified for improving the reliability of DSC modules 
for potential EV applications. With that, let's look at how those encapsulants were identified and how the thermomechanical behavior was theoretically evaluated. The primary software used for this study was ANSYS Workbench, which allows for the use of FE simulations with the appropriate material models capable of calculating and generating the thermomechanical stresses and strains of different materials. The simulation setup involved creating a model of a generic DSE structure with the proper boundary conditions emulating a real physical power module that was then exposed to simulated JDEC temperature cycling profile. The encapsulation properties of the DSE model were then manipulated and changed in a way that in which we were able to see how changing the stiffness and the CP of the encapsulant changed the plastic strain generated per cycle around the edges and corners of the bonded interfaces in the module where the maximum thermomechanical stresses are typically located. As I alluded to, the power module used for these FE simulations is a generic DSC structure that emulates typical DSC architectures found in industry and research, like for example, the Infineon hybrid packed DSC power modules that you can see here. The generic model includes a silicon chip bonded on top of a DBC substrate and interconnected to another top DBC substrate via a copper spacer using sintered silver bonds. The FE model used for the main analysis as seen here at the bottom is a quarter symmetric structure with all the main packaging components meshed to a degree where we can get an accurate evaluation of the bond fatigue and the overall deformation of the module during simulation. Finally, the three key areas of our investigation will focus on the three bonded interfaces around found in the module, which are the spacer substrate bond, the spacer chip bond, and the die attach, which is the chip and substrate bond. This study focused on running FE based simulations where the main packaging components materials, properties like the copper and the silicon and the sintered silver bonds material properties were kept constant, while the encapsulation properties, specifically as mentioned, the elastic modules and the CTE were changed and the accumulated bond fatigue around the edges and corners of the bonds was evaluated for each of these areas. So with that, let's look at some of the results. Starting off with the diattached bond, our FEA simulations were able to produce this type of contour plot, showing the effects of the elastic modulus and the CPE of different encapsulants on the accumulated plastic strain per cycle on this specific bond during the temperature cycling profile I detailed earlier. The range of each property that you see here corresponds to those found in commercial epoxies used to encapsulate these types of DSC structures. Now, looking at this graph, a clear trend emerges where we can see the encapsulants with a high modulus and low CP property produce the lowest accumulated plastic strain per cycle or lowest thermomechanical bond damage inside the diatach, while conversely, the encapsulants with a higher CP property and a lower stiffness produce the highest plastic strain per cycle, or in other words, highest thermomechanical bond damage in the diatach during a simulated temperature cycling profile. Having in mind that in general, a lower plastic strain in the bond means less fatigue, which implies a more reliable bond, we can effectively conclude that the thermomechanical reliability of this diatach bond or chip to substrate bond, in other words, improves as the elastic modulus of the encapsulant increases and the CP of the encapsulant decreases. This, can, this effectively shows us that not only does the encapsulant have some type of a thermomechanical effect on the sintered silver diatach bond, we can also, from this work, find suitable encapsulant or a suitable property pair of elastic modules and CTE that can help us improve the thermomechanical reliability and decrease the bond damage that we expect this specific bond to accumulate during a cycling test or during general module operation. Now, with that in mind, let's look at the other two bonds in this study. Starting off with the spacer chip bond, which is a sintered silver bond connecting the silicon chip to the copper spacer in our DSC model. From our FE simulations, we can produce a similar contour plot like the one I showed previously for the diatach, 
where we can see the effects of the elastic modulus and the CPE of our different encapsulants on the plastic stream per cycle for this specific bond. And what we can also see is a different trend emerge where the encapsulants with the high, the high elastic modulus and a CT property of about 20 parts per million per degree Celsius are the ones that actually produce the lowest amount of plastic strain per cycle and therefore the lowest amount of thermal mechanical bond damage accumulated in the bond during the cycling profile. Also, we can see that the encapsulants with a low elastic modulus and a very low CT property or a very high CT property within this range are the ones that produce the highest amount of plastic strain per cycle, or in other words, the highest thermal mechanical bond damage inside our space rich chip bond during a cycling profile. This leads to a much different conclusion than our previous one, where we can see that the thermal mechanical reliability of the space rich chip bond improves as the elastic modulus of the encapsulant increases and the CP of the encapsulant reaches a so called sweet spot of approximately 20 parts per, parts per million per degree Celsius. Similarly, with the spacer substrate bond, if we look at the results from our FEA simulations, we can see that a similar trend emerges like the one with our other spacer bond in terms of the effects of the elastic modulus and the CPE on the plastic strain per cycle on the bond of our different encapsulants. And again, this trend shows that the encapsulants with the highest elastic modulus and a CPE property of about 20 parts per million per degree Celsius yields the lowest amount of accumulated plastic strain per cycle inside the bond in the encapsulant with a low elastic modulus and a CT value of below and above 20 parts per million per degree Celsius yield the highest amount of plastic strain per cycle or the most amount of thermal mechanical damage accumulated inside the bond during our simulated temperature cycling profile. This helps us establish the same conclusion or bond fatigue mitigation strategy which is that the thermal mechanical reliability of the spacer substrate bond improves as the elastic modulus of the encapsulant increases and the CT of the encapsulant reaches that sweet spot or optimal point of 20 parts per million per degree Celsius. In order to see the physical behavior and physical reason of why we're seeing these different trends, we need to look deeper into the stress strain relationships between. Uh, the thermal stresses and thermal strains during the temperature cycling simulated experiment inside all three bonds. And with that, let's look at some of the stress strain hysteresis plots that we implemented here for FE simulations in order to analyze the physical behavior of our plastic strain a little bit better. Stress strain hysteresis plots or loops are very useful fatigue analysis tools for materials in general. They effectively represent a more complete picture of the relationship between the stresses and strains inside a material during reliability testing like temperature cycling. Effectively speaking, the integral of every stress strain hysteresis loop represents the plastic energy loss during that reliability test, which can effectively be correlated the higher bond fatigue and lower thermal mechanical reliability of said material. So in other words, if we look at the stress strain hysteresis plots of all of our bonds during our temperature simulated temperature cycling experiment, we can see how big the plastic energy loss is, during, is generated during that temperature cycling experiment with different encapsulants and see if the same trends emerge as the ones we saw in our previous contour plots. If we look at some of the hysteresis plots in the YZ plane, which is where the shear stresses and strains are uh, maximized or the highest during our temperature cycling experiment, we can see if we pick four different plots and we equate the elastic modulus for all the four different plots here shown for these encapsulants, and we just change the CTE we can see that the hysteresis plot plots with the CT value closest to that of the 20 parts per million per degree C, like the one here and the one here, show the lowest amount of plastic strain or plastic energy loss forming during that temperature cycling experiment, while the encapsulants with the CT values that are further from that 20 parts per million C optimal point show the 
show a higher amount of plastic energy loss during those during the simulated um, temperature cycling experiment. Same can also be determined for the other spacer substrate stress strain hysteresis plot, where again the encapsulants with a CT value closer to that of the 21 or 20 parts per million degree Celsius value show a much lower plastic, uh, uh, a much lower plastic energy loss than the ones with the same Young's modulus, but a, a CT value that is a lot further from that optimal point again. This effectively uh, coincides with that trend that we saw in the contour plots and shows that the shear stresses which we believe are the, the main contributor to that plastic strain per cycle inside the bond, are effectively experiencing the same trends as the one we saw on a more macro level in those plots that I previously showed. And unlike our spacer bonds, for our diattached shear stress strain hysteresis plots in the YZ plane, we see that for these four encapsulants here, the ones with the higher Young's modulus and the lower CT, so a lower plastic energy loss than the ones with a lower Young's modulus and a higher CTE, showcasing that there's no optimal point. And effectively, the trend that we saw in the initial plot from our FE simulation is preserved here when we look at the shear stresses and strains that the bond experiences during the temperature cycling experiment. This effectively gives us a better idea or a better confirmation, I should say, that the main physical causation of the plastic strain does not only come from those shear stresses and strain, but it also follows the overall macro behavior that we were able to see from our contour plots in the beginning. It showcases that the encapsulant can, one, have a different type of thermomechanical behavior on different bonds inside the DSC module, and secondly, on some bonds, specifically the ones around the spacer, can have an actual optimal point that can be look, can be determined and therefore a, a, a suitable encapsulant can be chosen for those specific bonds if needed. And finally, with that said, let's look if these thermomechanical models can be translated to a more functional DSC module. And for this final part, here, we've chosen a functional 1.2 kV silicon carbide MOSFET DSC PAR module that we were able to design a CAD model for and effectively run the same type of FE simulations that we did for our generic DSC modules using real world encapsulation materials used to package these types of materials with different elastic modules and CT properties. From the data, that we were able to retrieve from our FE simulations for these functional DSC modules, we can see that the trends that we saw before for our generic DSC modules are preserved here, where the rigid encapsulants, which have a higher modulus and a lower CT than the more soft encapsulant like silicone, which have a higher CT and a lower elastic modulus, show that, can, that they can improve the bond deformation by 30 to 50% more than the soft encapsulant and effectively preserve the trend that we saw in the beginning with our other module. With this, we can make a few conclusions, which is that the rigid encapsulants, which have a, which have which tend to have higher moduli and lower CT values can help decrease the thermomechanical bond fatigue present in DSC PAR modules during temperature cycling. In order to minimize the thermomechanical bond damage in DSC PAR modules during operation, we can recommend that adding an encapsulant with a higher elastic modulus or stiffness and adding an encapsulant with a matching CT to the adjacent material components surrounding the bond, like the chip and the spacer, can yield a lower thermomechanical fatigue inside the bond and therefore better thermomechanical liabilities, their thermomechanical liability for those bonds themselves. And then for our future work, we hope to effectively update and refine our simulation work by simulating a functional DSC power module under compression and other clamping force, which is typical for these types of DSC PAR modules, and for future experimental work, uh, 
we hope to fabricate DSC modules similar to the ones that we used in RFA simulations in order to test them under experimental cycling conditions to verify and further refine our FA simulation methodology so we can effectively confirm and uh, confirm these trends and these results that we've gotten on the theoretical front. Thank you for listening and please contact me if you have any questions about this stock. Thank you.